it is that time of the week. Welcome to another DSLR video shooter live stream if you're watching this after the fact. We do these live, so you're welcome to join us on most Wednesdays, but sometimes not, but mostly. <laughs> How's everybody doing? We have a whole bunch of people already in the chat. I am going to pop out said chat, remove these headphones, turn this music down, one man band in it here today and most days let's turn that down real nice okay put these down over here everyone hearing me okay let me know if not uh looks like some discussion has already been going down we've got react 3d she is nuts uh long conversation between the two of them steve peter david max uh and many many others welcome everybody so today we're going to try to figure out where most of the camera manufacturers that we care about are at with rumors, with upcoming cameras, because there are a lot coming up. It is ridiculous. This year alone, there's already been a ton of different releases, but we're, I feel, barely halfway, if not halfway, through everything that's slated for this year. And the next two months are going to be insane. So if you're in the market for a camera, I uh, am happy for you because you have lots of options, but also I do not pity you because there are so many choices. So let's ju just go ahead and jump straight in. I'm going to open up, whoa, what is this? One moment. We're going to open up Chrome. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna do that and that, and we're going to fix my Chrome window because that doesn't seem to be working. Uh, properties chrome there we go okay so uh you will notice that panasonic was not on the thumbnail we'll come back to that but if you're a panasonic fan uh don't worry that doesn't necessarily mean something so we're gonna start with the big boys canon i'm on canon watch uh the great rumor website i'll go ahead and drop a link to this in the chat for those who want to read along. Apparently, I, that's too many characters, so we're not gonna do that. So, here's the scoop. Um, a lot of these rumor sites will scrape other sites for information on patents. And a lot of these companies will release patents for upcoming cameras um, and other information that is a little cryptic, but it does give us an idea of what might be happening. So, with Canon, there have been two camera, um, you know, codes that have been registered, and it looks like two different mounts. So that tells us that we might see an EF mount mirrorless camera. We might see another mirrorless camera with maybe a Canon, uh, you know, ESM, or maybe a completely new mount. So very interesting. And so this post goes through the different just this random information of what Canon has registered. Uh, doesn't tell us too much, but it does tell us that something is going on. When it comes to batteries, I find interesting in this list, they say uh, under battery uh, LPE6, which is Canon standard larger batteries, or EP6N or equivalent. So that could mean we see a new battery. So again, not too much information when it comes to the time frames on this. Um, we don't know. If we look down here, um, there's been rumors, where is it, about September 4th or 5th, um, but that seems to be not confirmed. Um, but we will be seeing something in 2018, or at least we'll announce new gear before the end of 2018. So that, that's where we're at with Canon. This post also does mention that um, we didn't get any new intel about the 90D so uh, or an 80D Mark II, as well as a 7D Mark III. So it looks like those. Mm, there's a slim chance that'll happen, but most likely not. And uh, hopefully what happens is Canon moves forward with mirrorless. What's really interesting is will we see a brand new mount or will we see them continue to use the EF system or the EOS mount? Pretty interesting. So that's where we're at with Canon. Maybe something in the next month or two, uh, definitely by the end of 2018. And it's most likely going to be, my guess, and from what the rumors have said, a full frame mirrorless, at least one. Now, Nikon, let's move on to that. Make sure we're still seeing everything. Cool, cool. So Nikon has been 
releasing their own rumors. <laughs> and you've probably already seen this stuff all over social media. They've been like putting out these little cute videos, kind of demoing or showing off little bits of their new camera. And pretty much we know a lot at this point. So we're looking at two new cameras coming out from Nikon at least. And they're both full frame, the Z6 and the Z7. One is a high resolution, 40 something, 42 megapixel, I believe, a 45 megapixel. And the other one is a lower resolution, but better at low light, 24 megapixel. So it looks like they're kind of doing what Sony has done with the A7R being the high resolution, R for resolution, and the A7S um, with, you know, or maybe more like the A7 with the 24 megapixel sensor they're also releasing three new lenses with the z mount since they are f embracing a new mount for their cameras uh, from what i know and you can correct me if i'm wrong uh, but from what i know the mount is designed to be able to accept larger glass so they'll they'll be able to manufacture super fast big glass and one of the lenses they're going to be releasing uh, let's see, it's on the next post. Uh, a 58 millimeter F 0.95. So it's probably going to be crazy expensive. But the point is, this new mount that Nikon is embracing, the Z mount, or Nikon Z instead of Nikon F mount, is going to be able to be pretty feature proof. And um, so that's good that they're embracing it. I'm still waiting to see what Canon's going to be doing there. So that could be interesting. So there you have it, Nikon, when it comes to video specs, if we go on this post, uh, what could possibly go wrong with the new Nikon full frame mirrorless? This is on mirrorless rumors now. Um, they talk about video and from what I've read from this site as well as others, video will be catching up. Uh, it won't do anything special for us. So if you're a video person, which most likely you guys are, yeah, it's gonna be mediocre. So it'll be interesting to see how this camera splashes in the market as it will because for us video folk there's better options from sony hopefully canon here soon and we don't have the lenses if you're a nikon person you might have the lenses but they have a new mount so it's kind of interesting but they got to pull the trigger at some point now i already see people saying skip to sony which is what's up next before we jump into camera rumors um, interesting thing, I think today, yeah, August 15th, Sony takes over as number one in the U.S. for full frame in the full frame market, which isn't really that surprising. And I think, and this is them coming out with all this information. Uh, I think this is them saying, hey, hey, I know you guys are all excited about Nikon and Canon, but we're number one. Don't forget, keep, keep buying E-mount FE lenses from us, please. <laughs> so... Uh, I heard somewhere that someone posted uh, stats on like every four out of 10 full frame mirrorless cameras that were sold either this year or between 2017 and now uh, have all been Sony's, which is pretty interesting. So Sony moving on to rumors. Uh, apparently Sony execs are saying we're going to have a legit answer to whatever Canon and Nikon offer. That's kind of a no brainer that they would say something like that. But we can expect probably at least two new cameras coming from Sony, even after everything they've done this year already. So the first of which is one I'm super stoked. Well, I'm stoked for both of them. But this one I'm really excited about, the A6700. I don't have it on my desk, but I love the A6500. It's just such a Swiss Army knife. Amazing amount of horsepower packed into that tiny body. So we can probably safely expect to see a replacement to that uh, this year, something like the A6700. Uh, when it comes to specs, we're not going to see some stuff that the A7 series have had. So I would not expect them to use the new battery, although that would be amazing. Um, and then there's some information here about 4K60 with a crop, which would make sense. Um, on the a7s3 which we'll get to here in a second we can expect uh, to likely see 4k 60 no crop but on this camera it makes sense to me that they have to crop it because <laughs> there's already overheating issues and if they're packing more into the same body size that might be a problem and we don't know if they'll update the body 
I would imagine knowing Sony, they wouldn't, but who knows? They've been doing that with their A7 series. Uh, better rolling shutter, um, less lag startup time, which is pretty rough on the camera as it stands. New sensor, uh, better low light, still 24 megapixels. Huge improvements in IBIS. And um, better A filter, new color science, since Sony's been slowly updating that. Um, I, we can expect to see that on all the future cameras. So the A7 was kind of the first camera to get that kind of improvement. The new Venice color information and stuff that Sony's been developing. So yeah, that's going to be kind of cool. Better UI, touchscreen. Hopefully the touchscreen will be usable in menus because I'm really getting tired of that Sony stuff. So yeah, that's the A6700. The A7S 3 making sure we're still good over here. Cool. Um, a couple new lenses and the A7S 3 uh, When it comes to this information, again, all of this is rumors, but, you know, usually a lot of these sites have a good rough idea of what's up. Probably not going to see 10-bit. Makes sense to me, especially since Sony's higher-end cameras don't have 10-bit internal. So I think we're going to have to wait until the A7S 4 or the A7 IV and all that stuff. Before we start to see that, there'll hopefully be an FS5 Mark III out that has it or something like that. Um, looking at the specs here. Uh, yeah, so, so 4K60 is in here. Um, and not too much else. So it's going to be interesting going to be interesting it's probably going to be also i believe uh it's been confirmed that sony wants to stick with the a7s3 they want to stick with a really low megapixel count meaning the low light is going to be dynamite which is what the a7s is known for and the a7 III, which is already out uh depending on how you look at it it has better low light than the old a7s3 so i'm really excited to see what sony does here and if we can shoot at you know, stupid, stupid numbers, 256,000 ISO with a clean image or something. So yeah, very, very interesting stuff. Now that's not all folks. Uh, there's another post on mirrorless rumors and we'll be addressing the chat here in a second guys. So hang in there. If you've got questions, um, we've got some other stuff. They, they did a great post where they broke down kind of what these companies have released uh, and, and registered camera numbers, which don't tell us what the cameras are, but it's kind of a small hints for those who know what to look for. And we can expect four Nikon cameras, three Canon cameras, two Fuji cameras, one Leica and one, uh, how do you even say that? I know people love that. The photographers are going to kill me with this Rickhoff, Rickhoff, Ryko, whatever. Um, so we've already talked about Nikon, Canon, Fuji is slated to drop the X-T3, so that'll be very interesting to see what they do with that. And uh, there's some other information here. Let's scroll down and look at Fuji. And I know a lot of you guys aren't Fuji fans. Uh, I, I dig the Fuji color. I'm not quite there when it comes to actually owning a Fuji. I bought and sold an X-H1. It was an amazing camera, but with everything else that's out there, it just wasn't good enough, really, for me. So uh, the X-T2... And what's interesting is down here, this this camera registered number FF eighteen zero 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 four has same similar parts or the same parts as the XH one and XE three. So that could mean nothing. That could mean something. Um, but I definitely think we should keep an eye on Fuji because if Fuji figures out some stuff, they could be set to really wreak havoc on uh, on Sony paint. Canon even. Their color science is dynamite. It sucks that they don't do full frame, but we could see that change. Um, but they're, they're posed, man. They're, I think they could do some amazing stuff if they make some good decisions and uh, that next generation of cameras from them, if that's good. Now, we also have, and we have to address it, of course, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So if you're in this for video, I mean... We've got so many good options, guys. It's ridiculous. So from what we know with the Black Magic, um, we're still slated to deliver on time. At least that's what they've told people in recent events. That recent Miami event that went down, uh, it was confirmed from them that they're still shooting for September. We should check B&H, actually. 
to see when it's expected to deliver. Um, magic. Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Um, September 8, 2018. No exact date yet. Okay. So next month, if what they're saying is true, we can expect this thing to drop. So uh, we're looking at the same sensors, the GH5S. If they did the multi aspect ratio the same way that Panasonic did that with the GH5S, we are looking at a really solid camera. You throw a speed, boost on, speed booster on here and you're getting pretty close, not quite there, but close to full frame video on this camera. If autofocus sucks, I would definitely put a speed booster on it. And for probably what, 16, 1700 bucks, you've got a bigger than Super 35 raw camera it's amazing and 4k 60 frames per second pretty dope so that's gonna be that's gonna be really something else it's gonna be a bloodbath uh for those who are trying to make up a decision and you're in the market for uh, a smaller camera um and then finally on this thumbnail for what you're watching right now, you probably, or at least a lot of you guys in the chat here, notice there was no Panasonic logo. Going back to that post um, where, you know, mirrorless rumors broke down all the different cameras, they had a little bit of text. Where was it? Near the top? Yeah. Panasonic does not register their camera codes ahead of an announcement. Uh, Sony sometimes does. And it looks like Canon definitely does and some others do. So these codes in these blog posts that we've been in these rumors, um, Panasonic does not release those before their actual announcement. So they'll do something like come out with a GH5, then do the camera code registration from the way I'm understanding it. So we could still see something from Panasonic. The likelihood of that is pretty low in my opinion. I feel like at the beginning of the year, they just shot all their rounds into the air <laughs> with the GH5. We, I mean, we already had that. And then the GH5S right after that. They got their G9. They've got their EVA1. So I have a hard time seeing them doing something, but I would love it. I mean, hey, while we're having this massive air show, let's go ahead and throw one more manufacturer uh, in the mix. So that's where we're at with all these different cameras. Um, definitely check out these rumor sites if you want more information. We're probably going to continue to see information. I have these sites set up to send me uh, email notifications uh, when they have new information. And then I just have them automatically go to a folder. And I keep try to keep an eye on what's up with all that. So that is the scoop. What do you guys think of all of this? First of all, are there any of you out there who are in the market for a camera or planning on buying something in the next four months. I'd be curious to know. I am going to uh, grab a window here. Let me see, go back to this. So I feel like I missed some, either a super chat or something. So I'm gonna pull that up here. Uh, let's see, uh, one second guys, talk some amongst yourselves. How do I get that? I did it last time where I had a window where I could pop out um, the various. Ah, here we go. Open in a new window. Super chat. Okay, so Carlos, welcome. New member. What's up, dude? How you doing? How's your red? Do you get it back yet? I haven't been able to watch much YouTube recently. Uh, so Carlos just jumped on the new membership. What we do is after this show, there's an exclusive live stream where we just kick back and chat gear technique all that fun stuff or whatever we can talk about golfing or gaming uh preferably gaming because i'm not a not a big golfer but welcome carlos uh thanks for jumping on um he's getting the black magic pocket cinema camera 4k we got to come up with a shorter name can we just say pocket 4k does that make sense um blah, blah, blah. i'm not buying anything gh5 still killing it from trevor yep I mean, I, I've been meaning to think about thinking about doing a video entitled "If I Lost Everything." Like, if if this entire studio burned down and my insurance, for whatever reason, didn't come through, what would I get? And if I set myself a budget of maybe two grand or something, 
two to five thousand what would i do to rebuild a basic kit i don't think uh yeah i think an a6500 would be on that list or something like a gh5 depending on your budget but yeah i mean all the cameras that are coming out now could easily service us for forever you know 4k isn't going to go away anytime soon so i think that's pretty smart uh, i'm going to go ahead and close this window go back to the normal view there we go uh, okay going back down a little bit what's up fur black magic pocket cinema camera 4k call it bump kick <laughs> okay nice and we have a five dollar donation from carlos timothy he says number one dat anamorphic video <laughs> number two uh just kidding very nice never uh, very niche, so never mind. Almost 10,000 strong in the Facebook group. Uh, what handle and monitor mount did I use in my latest A7 III video? Great questions. Uh, so, Carlos, here's a scoop. Anamorphic video is inbound. There's a tiny device on my desk right now that I needed to check out before doing uh, my video or video series. Let me guys know if you want kind of a one-stop shop video on Anamorphic, or would you like kind of a little three-part series going into more depth? Because there's so much information that could be covered with Anamorphic. At any rate, getting on to your question, Carlos. Um, oh, you know what? I have it right here. Check it out. This is the kind of setup I was using for that video. Do I have a camera I can put this on? No. Uh, so in that video, at least what I'm thinking you're asking, I had the a7 III in a cage. And by the way, for those who didn't ask this question, this is a universal rigging setup that I use almost on every single camera. I take the camera, either put it in a cage on its own or add, it, add a battery grip underneath the camera and put all of that in a cage. Then on the top of the cage, I put a nano safety rail. It's essentially a piece of metal that can accept stuff like this handle. And this just slides right on the if this is the nano rail it just slides on and locks in place and it's really secure great way to do things if you need to remove it it's it's one little loosener you know a knob instead of trying to unscrew stuff so this is the setup i've been using this handle is perfect it's a little more expensive it's actually designed for red cameras um, so you'll notice there's a little rubber piece right here so that if you have it mounted this way and the lens is over here this is your lens this is the handle the monitor won't damage itself on that little rubber area but what i like about it is it's really really just the right size for your hand as you can see there's no waste of space it's not this giant handle and then it's nice and low profile on the top there's a gazillion get my lighting figured out here tons of quarter 20s and then same on the face on the front here which is how i have this monitor mounted and long story short i'm using a small rig monitor mount it's a uh toolless friction based system so you snug it up just so and then you can just grab your monitor push it around so this is probably the most compact monitor handle setup you can get for your camera and then the whole thing just slides off and gets out of the way if you want to pack down to something nice and small for let's say a gimbal so i love this setup um it's i'll go ahead and remove the monitor there's a little thumb tightener built into this monitor mount there's also another one that came out recently that i need to check out from uh uh camvate camvate but there it is it's this little piece of metal that i have bolted to the handle and then you just have you know a little quarter 20 to mount it all together so hopefully that answers your, que your question uh carlos I, did you ask me that question on twitter if so i apologize uh i've been pretty bad at email and twitter of late so yeah uh is that tiny device a moment anamorphic no it's not uh i'm primarily going to be focusing on when i do that anamorphic video on larger camera anamorphic but i know people dig that stuff or the the phone stuff too uh i like to or i do a series series three-part series wow okay so people are saying go for the series cool we will do that. Uh, anyone have an SL2? If anyone does, let the mitten dad know. I find the GH5S performance interesting, but I think for the price, the Blackmagic or the Pocket 4K makes more sense. 
uh, and kind of fulfills a similar role. Yeah, if they can get a, a good workflow figured out for that, I think that could be a great camera. What I love about the GH5S is that multi aspect ratio, so wider field of view on that camera, uh, which hopefully Blackmagic takes advantage of that, you know, multi aspect ratio setup and the workflow. If you're shooting log on the GH5S, it's a joke. You shoot ex overexposed by one stop and uh, slap a LUT on it from Panasonic and post, slight tweak, done. No problems at all. Um, so, yeah, really dig that. Uh, scrolling down, no flip out screen. Is that a deal breaker, Paul? Or Powell? Just joined. Has the GH5S been discussed? Not really. We're mainly focusing on all the new stuff coming out. I'm waiting for some good quality native glass for my EOS M5. Ooh, yeah. It's going to be really interesting to figure out what they do. Because Canon's got that interesting, they already have the EOS M setup, but the lenses are garbage. And so that's not going to pass for pros who want mirrorless. Uh, so they're going to have to either come out with really good EOS M lenses, which I don't even know if that mount can support full frame. I don't know. Um, or they're going to have to use the EF lens mount. But if they do that, they'll be the first to use an old mount on the new mirrorless system. So maybe they'll come out with a third mount. I don't know. But it's going to be very interesting to see what they do and whenever they do it. Uh, let's see here. Whoa, chat is all over the place. What softbox am I using? I'm using a Falcon Eyes 12T LED mat, which has a softbox that came with it works great uh, especially at this angle you can see this nice shadow here it cuts out all, all the pudge pudge works great for live streaming um, da, 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 da. let's go over here go over here make sure we're still good 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 best mirrorless for running gun stuff so that's kind of an interesting question to apply to all these new cameras for running gun well Nikon's gonna have IBIS Sony already has it. Canon, uh, I didn't read anything about that, but I, they should employ it. And that's one thing they kind of are weak on, if you think about it, actually. Canon really hasn't done a solid image stabilization yet in body, 5-axis, or anything like that. So, hmm. So, running gun, if it's me, I think for, like, documentary-style work, the best is going to be the GH5. I know you guys, some of you are probably really tired of hearing about that camera, but you throw on their little XLR adapter, and with one battery, you have professional audio, 4K 10-bit, and the, one of the best stabilization on any camera ever. So that's a pretty solid setup. So for run and gun, I'd put my money on the GH5. And the dynamic range is great on that camera, so you can really push and pull things in post-production without too much pain. Uh... Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm 16, starting freelance, looking for a camera to buy within the next 8 to 10 months. Was thinking the a7 II, maybe the a7 III is what he meant from Jordan. Um, yeah, if you've got the time, dude, I'd sit it out. I'd buy a cheap camera now, um, something good enough for your work, something that's going to work for you, and, but don't throw tons of money out the window yet. But yeah, if you're going to be getting something in eight months you should be pretty set what do you think of the food what do you think fujifilm will do with the xt3 such as pricing performance since the xh1 is at the top of the line right now from david great question david i have no idea i'm not that familiar i just bought my first fuji you know this year um so i'm not that familiar with the lineup but they got to do something but they're being so weird about everything they just updated their older cameras to almost match the XH1. So who knows what they're going to do? The XT2 uh, or the T3 could be pretty phenomenal. But I, I can't tell you much more than that. Hype for the Sony A7S 3. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what they come up with. Um, let's see. Yeah, good point about 
file sizes for with the pocket 4k i think what's cool is just the option to have that all in a what is it going to be a thousand dollars right it's crazy crazy any way to make the gh 5s less video like oh yeah definitely shoot uh shoot with non micro four thirds lenses shoot at 24 and shoot log log is really great on that camera and you can use the LUT from Panasonic on the camera so you can see what it's going to look like. And I love V-Log, man. I really do. Of all the color sciences I've worked with, I haven't worked that much with C-Log from Canon, but V-Log is really solid, dude. It's very simple, and it looks really good. Is there a good anamorphic solution at 1,000 or less for Canon and Sony? Absolutely organic. Uh, if you stay tuned for my video, I'll have tons of great options because uh, depending on how you go about it, you can totally do that and get some great results. Um, so I'm way behind on chat, guys. I'm gonna scroll down here a little bit. I'm afraid of Metabones. Why? They're pretty solid. Uh, and we got ourselves another $5 donation, this time from Archie Beats. Archie says, what camera and app live hosts are you using for your live stream within the fire with the fire queue? Okay, cool. So I am using OBS. It's free software. It pretty much runs on any OS and system out there. Uh, I'm using a camera run into running through a USB three capture device. So you plug HDMI into this thing and now you've got a camera. And then the software, you can do all kinds of crazy things. You can, and someday I need a demo of this. I've, I really do, because a lot of people ask about it. But what I have is like essentially a folder. It's called a scene, and that is called live show. And then I have everything laid out and I can turn them on and off, toggle them on and off. So I just did the small donation for you. We can turn on the epic one momentarily if we wanted to. That's really loud, apologies. Um, and that's just a video file that turns on and it's over my face right now. Um, I can do all kinds of other little things like little, little overlays. Uh, you just turn things on and off. And then when I'm done with the show, I'll hit one that turns on the outro and I'll mute my microphone and Bob's your uncle. So, uh, yeah, OBS is great. It can be a little buggy, but, uh, if you tweak the settings, you should be solid. And I would definitely, if you're interested in this stuff, subscribe to Epos Vox, E-P-O-S-V-O-X. That dude uh, has some really advanced and and beginner uh, content, so good stuff. Daniel Moore Photography, hey Caleb, do you think the Black Magic would be a good choice for wedding filmmaking? The price is very tempting. That's a great question. Uh, I think it would it would depend on a couple things. Battery life. <clears throat> People are like, oh boy, they, they have a bigger battery from Canon. This is going to be great. Mm, I think it's going to be barely better than the old one, if you ask me. Maybe a little better. But, be, you know, yes, it's a bigger battery. But with all the stuff they're adding, like 4K, RAW, all that stuff, I think battery life is going to be pretty rough. Um from a post-production standpoint, if you're willing to deal with their color science and, and if that's going to work for you, it does shoot ProRes, so that'll be a really quick workflow, but the file sizes are going to be larger. So those are the things I would be considering. You, I know you have an a7 III. The autofocus on that is dynamite and it's full frame. So if you want something a little more fiddly but you can get more out of, maybe, but if you're happy with just kind of the running gun nature of autofocus on a full frame camera from Sony, probably stick with the a7 III. Um, let's see. Good point uh, from Trevor. Nikon video autofocus is atrocious. We probably won't see great autofocus from them, I'm guessing, when it comes to video. Um, what 30 party lenses would you recommend for the Canon M50? Um, if you're okay with manual focus, then man, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can play with some, I would look for M39 mount vintage lenses. If you're coming from bigger or older style cameras, like the Canon DSLRs, you can do a lot of adapting, but there's actually a lot of limitations. When you move over to, over to mirrorless, there's a lot more you can adapt to. You can do M39, 
uh, C mount in some cases. So there's there's a lot more flexibility there. There's other ones I'm forgetting at the top of my head. But yeah, we'll be covering some of those lens sets here in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Still not tired of hearing about the GH5 from Ryan. Cool. I'm just kind of jumping down here, guys. I'm way, 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 way behind. Have you tried Streamlabs uh, OBS? I have not. Or Streamlabs. I think that's only on the PC side. And I'm on Apple hardware, so I don't think I can use that. Have you tried Confinity yet? No. But i uh, really excited with what they're doing. Y you know, just the camera and the quality aside, just the fact that we have more people who aren't Canon, Panasonic, even Blackmagic is really exciting. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, the screen on the back of the pocket camera. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that affects, uh, affects battery life for sure. Uh, why Panasonic don't make full frame sensor in the GH line? Well, they're obviously big Micro Four Thirds fans, um, but I would be very interested. Could you imagine like a GH six or seven or something from Panasonic with full frame? Just imagine the GH five S with full frame, in body stabilization, and great autofocus. Let's let that set in for a second. That would be crazy. Now, will they do that? Maybe. It might cost a lot. Uh, they might price that, you know, significantly above what they're doing with the GH5S and GH5. They also have to protect the EVA1 and their um, what's the other one called? Very Cam. So that could be a problem. But man. If, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Panasonic, right? Because they've already given us so much. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they have no problem with, with answering emails or with an actual camera. People constantly ask them for things, and they implement that stuff. So, I don't know. We could see. Obviously, they're really comfortable with Micro Four Thirds, so it might be a while. But never say never, I guess. Yeah. Uh, does vlog cause noise in post while grading? If you expose correctly or underexpose, yes, you'll. It's just like S log, you'll get noise. So the trick is to overexpose, and then you, your goal should always be, especially with log for the most part, to shoot and when you pull it in post, lower things. If you're having to push, you know, highlights, shadows, midtones up, you're doing log wrong, especially on vlog and S log. Uh, so yeah, try to pull things down, even if it means shooting at a higher ISO. And I, I know people think, you know, high ISO is noise. Oh no. But where you have problems in post with noise often is when you're pushing things up, you're taking those shadows and raising them. And that's where it gets noisy. So by bringing the midtones and shadows down, you usually clean things up. Another five dollar donation. I need to get a steam steam deck, stream deck, the little buttons that I can easily do this kind of stuff. Uh, the building share at five pounds. What's going on, boss? Uh, he says, "Hey Caleb, would you do a video on your live stream setup, even a paid course?" Regards, the sheriff. Yes, oh, I I've sort of covered it in the past, but I should do a full video breaking down this setup. Would I do a guide? Probably not, just because I'm not a professional when it comes to live streaming. I'll do guides on camera, stuff that I can, you know, fully wrap my head around. But who knows? Maybe. Or maybe I could team up with someone who really knows what they're talking about. And we could go from there. But yeah, uh, we will be doing a video on that. And I'll try to giddy up on that. Maybe I'll do either one video just on live streaming my setup and then a budget setup or two videos demoing my setup and then another video on a live streaming setup for you know set the budget right um and another five dollar donations this time or excuse me five pound donation from daniel moore photography he's one of our members what's up dude just because you're a dope guy see you in the members chat you're so kind sir i really appreciate it man thank you 
and I see we've got a couple two month badges out there. If you guys see in those little blue badges, those are the veterans of the members club. So we got Furworks, we got Daniel, Allen. It's kind of a, a a newbie, but he's in there with his one month. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah. So people are asking about the live stream setup, so we'll definitely uh, do that. And Derek yells, "Have you messed around with the HLG picture profile on Sony A7 III? Question mark times a thousand. Uh, not not really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they should improve on CAF and the dynamic range, though. Okay, we talked about mm, Panasonic." Uh, from Powell, is there a point to shooting 60 frames per second and then making 24, but still having the option and then making it 24p, but still having the option to get slow-mo is 24p good when shooting from 60? Uh, the way I would think about it is what's your final frame rates going to be. So for me, I do everything at 24 frames per second. I like it. I know some people don't. Uh, that means if I shoot at 60, it's going to be slowed down. Um, I do know some people who will shoot or have mentioned Levi, uh, Alan from Left Coast, or now Levi, uh, on YouTube. I believe at one point he told me he shot at 60 a lot, so 4K 60 on the GH5, and then either used it not slowed down, or just he did that so he had the option to slow down, slow down if he wanted to. So I haven't tried that, but uh, I know some people do that. Um, also, when's your A7 III God coming out? Money waiting. Nice. So we're finishing up the rough edits on my A7 III God, and then, man, I'm hoping to get it out as soon as possible, a week maybe. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to try to get that done. But uh, not messing around. <laughs> it's coming, and it's going to be a beast. So, yeah. Macking mixer and OBS info, please. Yes. So Jesse, we'll we'll talk about the whole setup that I use, and then maybe a budget alternative uh, for people who are just getting started. Um, Matthew Tyndall with a five dollar donation. If you need some live streaming help, holla. Uh, have been doing it now for over ten years. Would love to chat. Cool, Matthew. Thank you. Wow, ten years doing live streams. Whoo. So back when it was really crappy and sucky to do them, right? <laughs> like, and by that, I mean, you know, like now it's so easy. You go to a web page and hit go and you're done. Whereas back in the day, it was yikes, pretty, pretty tough to do well. So cool. Cool. I'll keep that in mind, dude. Uh, best heavy duty travel tripod for video. So that's kind of a tough one because travel and heavy duty, but, um, I would say check out the B free from Manfrotto. Um, that could be a good option. I know Benro also has some good travel ones. So if you're looking for a small, those are good. Otherwise, uh, if you want, if you have a lot of money, check out Miller. Um, they've got some super solid smaller tripods. They're not tiny, but they're they're smaller. Uh, yeah, Carlos is talking about HLG. Pretty much the same thing I say to people. Because everyone thinks there's some kind of secret thing. You get HLG and, oh, my goodness, A7 III is so much better. Not quite the case. Um, check out Allison. No. Alistair Chapman's video on HDR and HLG. It should be here on YouTube. Um, it's just kind of him just talking to the camera, so it's not the most exciting thing ever. But that's where it's at when it comes to what is it, when should you, and should you not use it. So I think there's a lot of confusion out there about that. Let's see. Adamus Ninja 5. Yeah, we're a little late on that. But uh, by we, I mean, we haven't seen it. And uh, hopefully it'll come out soon. Interesting timing for that device with all these cameras. I wonder if they're delaying it because of the cameras. Hmm. Something to think about. I don't know. I don't have any insider information. Let me just put that out there. I'm just thinking out loud uh let's see here panasonic engineers have said that hlg provides the best dynamic range performance on the gh 5 s uh jordan drake mentioned it a few times in their videos interesting um 
Let's see here. When shooting log in the GH5, image is overexposed, super bright with 180 degree shutter and 10 stop variable ND filter. Any suggestions? Uh, first, I would turn on the log assist. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Juggling these different camera manufacturers always throws me off. There should be like a, a mode. Um, there definitely is, and you can program it to a button. So I have a button set on the back of my camera where I can turn on and off. I think it's like log assist or vlog assist and or LUT assist. You essentially it'll show a LUT on your actual camera screen. That'll help. Log always looks really bright when you're shooting, uh, but in reality, it's not that bright. So make sure you're using a LUT or zebras is, is an even better way to go. Um, so yeah, unless you're legit saying it's impossible to get, you know, you might just need, need more ND. Uh, let's see here. Scrolling down a little bit. What's yeah, Carlos cool. I would log in around. Um, live stream video guide. Yeah. I, I mean, I like the idea of doing that. I, I'm like, have this sickness where I love organizing information, um, which in the grand scheme of things, that's kind of my job, right? <laughs> figuring things out and then and then finding a better way to explain stuff so I love the idea of a live streaming guide but to do the guides I do um, and anyone who's purchased them out there will know or if you end up getting one you'll totally get fairly quickly is that I want to make sure all the information is there so there's really nothing missed so this a7 III guy that I'm coming out with by the end of that thing there's no situation you'll find yourself in where you can't find something or you don't know where something is, or rather you don't know what's wrong with your camera. Um, everything you could possibly need to know about video on the a7 III is going to be in that guide all the way to anamorphic and having autofocus that's going to be in there. So when it comes to live streaming and doing a live streaming guide, I don't feel equipped enough to be able to make sure I'm covering all the bases. So if someone bought that and they're a Twitch streamer, I'm not on Twitch, so I couldn't, I couldn't help them. So if I did do it, it would need to, I would need to bring other people on to make sure it's that well-rounded, uh, Academy level guide by Academy. I mean the video shooters Academy, which is where I sell the guides anyway. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Digga, 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 digga. Uh, trying to figure out where we are at. I lost my spot, so we're just going to move on. Um, love the fact that you fast track learning for us. Thanks, Carlos. Yeah. I can't do it for everything, but, um, and I don't, I feel like I need a vacation after, especially after the Sony guides. So here's the deal. I'll just like give you a little inside behind the scenes, uh, something to, to chew on. Let me take a drink real quick. as I stutter. So I'm always completely mentally wasted, uh, usually after these guides, but especially after the Sony ones for two reasons. One, you guys know how ridiculous Sony menus are. So memorizing, learning that whole thing, knowing exactly what every single setting does is rough, especially on the a7 III, because there's got to be about tw 10 to 15 settings that when one is turned on, it it either turns off deactivates or screws with four other settings. So to remember all that stuff and make sure all that's straight, which I think we've done, believe it or not, is a pain in the butt. The second is the stupid HDMI issues on Sony cameras is unbelievable. If you have HDMI connected, um, I need to show the screen to people. So I have to shoot, I have to record in 1080p and then, but zebras won't show up unless I unplug it. And then when you shoot in 4k, you know, you're not going to get any menus. And then when you have all of that connected, if I'm trying to show people autofocus, it won't work or parts of autofocus won't work when there's HDMI or Wi-Fi. It's just a nightmare from a logistic, uh, logistical standpoint. Anyway, that was just me getting that out there. And I'm so glad <laughs> we got through, through that. Cause it's, I mean, it gets to the point where I've got a camera filming a camera and then another camera showing that camera just to get through this ridiculous HDMI issues and autofocus to show it properly is ridiculous. So yeah, all that out of the way, 
uh, it's coming together nicely, and I'm uh, I'm really excited to get that out. Five dollar donation from Danny. Thank you, Danny. If you have a question, let me know, sir. Canon full frame mirrorless. Oh, here we go. Canon full frame mirrorless thoughts. You know, we were talking about it earlier. Um, if they can figure out the mount thing, that's the most interesting part about this whole thing. What are we gonna do with this mount? EF, brand new mount that no one's ever seen before, or the EOS M, which let me guys know if you know anything about that, but I don't know if that'll work with full frame mirrorless. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then if they can get in-body stabilization figured out, then we could be talking. I think I think what they're going to do, because it's the Canon way, they want to protect their DSLR line still. I think the only reason they're doing the full-frame mirrorless now is because literally they're getting stomped by Sony in that department. So what I think they're going to do is give us just enough to keep their base secured. They're not going to be like Panasonic who throws everything at the wall, right? They're going balls to the wall. Give it, As much as they can give us without paying us money, they'll do. Sony is sort of like that. They really push things when it comes to their tech. Obviously, that's working for them, and they kind of need to do that because there's some things they don't do super well, like skin, tones, um, so they have to kind of you know work around that. Canon, my guess is they're going to give us if it's a new mount, great, a new mount. Um, they're going to give us 4K video up to 30 frames per second, 1080p, maybe at 96, probably 60 frames per second. Essentially, I think all we're going to get out of Sony, or I'm sorry, out of Canon is going to be 4K with dual pixel in a full frame mirrorless. I hate to say it because it sounds so boring, but I think that's what's going to happen. So it blows but and i would love to be proven wrong but my guess is that'll be just enough to protect themselves slash bring over a couple sony users uh, but they're not going to go crazy when it comes to video uh too smart says uh correct me if I'm wrong but nikon owns the samsung nx1 technology yeah i don't know if they do that's great because uh, that camera was a huge hit, and then it died. <laughs> so that's sad. Uh, let's see. Gonna jump down here again, guys. I feel like I lost. I missed something. We got Danny. Want to be films? What's going on? Uh, uh, Tim says, "Hey, Caleb. What do you think about the A seven thousand seven hundred? Especially, what is it going to cost? Hmm. It'll probably be in the same line as their their previous camera. So, what it, what do they come out new? Fifteen hundred, fourteen hundred bucks. So, I think that would be that would make sense. Uh, what do you think about the release of the Light Dome Two? When do you think they'll they'll release Light Dome Two? I don't know. Uh, I know the one twenty D's Mark Two going to be happening and i do know for a fact that it's great i can't tell you about the light dome 2 though but whoa, i'm so looking forward to that thing i i hate hate collapsing traditional soft boxes in fact i just don't um i just hang them from the ceiling and then get them down if i need them i just really don't in in back when i was doing production on the road all the time um and, and more more local driving to a shoot places i would just chuck the whole thing in my back seat and not take them apart because that sucks let's see uh canon seems more conservative and boring totally agree uh i heard leaks about a possible nikon cinema camera thoughts interesting um go for it I, it could be some interesting competition in that like FS 500 range. I hope Fuji does that. And I have a hard time seeing them not do that. They already have their legit cinema lenses. So why not uh, do a little super 35 cinema camera? That could be really awesome. What's up, Dan? Samsung couldn't market the NX series. Yeah. 
Um, uh, just reading you guys, chat and chat and chat. What's up, Bart? How you doing, bro? How's your shed building going? Um, something for Panasonic Spect anytime soon? Not that we know of, but it'd be awesome if they jumped into the party here at the end as well. Uh, Two-person audio interview setup, IVA 6300. Great question. You could get a little preamp or recorder that has two XLR inputs and either do two LAVs or two shotgun microphones. If you're indoors, I'd recommend picking up a pencil condenser microphone. And believe it or not, they're sold in pairs most of the time. So for about 100 bucks, you get two what look like tiny XLR shotguns run those into a little audio device um try and think of one off the top of my head there's a bunch out there check my channel i've reviewed a bunch or like an h6n or something h5 h6 any of those would do the trick and finally if you really like the wireless thing i haven't fully tested it but sarah monic and a couple other companies make a lapel setup where it's one receiver so one little thing that goes on the top of your camera and plugs into the mic input and then two microphones, wireless microphones. That would work. I want to say you could get one of those for three, four hundred bucks. So that could be a great option, too. Yeah, it's a good question, man. Uh, that's a great question. That's a it's a good video idea. Uh, master in motion meetup question mark. Is that is that happening? I haven't checked into it. I don't know what's up with that. Um, would love some anamorphic tutorials. Awesome, Ben. We were talking earlier about doing that series instead of just one video, so I'll get on it. Start writing. Uh, okay, folks. I think at this point, what's gonna go down is uh, we're gonna finish up here. And uh, for those who are members, I'll see you guys in the uh, after show live stream. Essentially, for everyone else, man. It's crazy times. All we can do is keep our sticks on the ice. Uh, if you've got coin and you're looking to throw it at a camera, hang in there a little bit. Um, we're going to see some really interesting stuff here, and it's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, it's going to be pretty insane for me the next couple months trying to cover all of this, but it's going to be great. And, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up this live stream. Thank you guys so much for joining me. As I begin to lose my voice, so this is good timing, have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you guys in the next video.